It really feels like everyone nowadays is trying to add that filmic look to their footage. So when the folks at Dehansa reached out to me about trying their plugin for DaVinci Resolve, I said, absolutely. And for those of you that don't know, Dehansa is a plugin you add to your footage when you're editing or color grading that lets you emulate a whole wide variety of film stocks. It's super impressive how many options of how many different film stocks they have built into their plugin. Let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how I use it. All right, so I'm here in the Edit tab in DaVinci Resolve, and on the left of my timeline over here is the intro to the video that you watched. That's all already been colored using the Dehancer plugin. But I'm going to take this footage on the right, which is still unedited, uncolored, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I would use Dehancer to color this footage. So the first thing I'm gonna do is head over to the Color tab. So coloring using Dehancer is very, very simple if you want it to be. And really you only need to use the tools that exist within their plugin to color your footage, which is really nice. It's kind of like a one-stop shop. So once you've installed the plugin, which they have a great tutorial on their website on how to do so, you go over to your effects tab and at the bottom you should have a tab that says film emulation. And then you'll see your installed version of Dehancer Pro. You take that and you drag it onto your node here in your color grade. Now don't be alarmed if your footage looks funky right away because it immediately, once you've added the plugin to a node, adds a bunch of the emulation already to it. You can go back and deselect all of those things, which I'm gonna do right off the get-go. So I've added the effect to my first node and now I'm gonna go back and just disable all of the things it's doing to my footage. So I've gone through the Dehancer panel and just deselected everything. So nothing is enabled from the plugin. And I'm methodically just gonna go from top to bottom and work my way through the plugin to build the look I want for my footage. And the nice thing about Dehancer is there's really no node-based grading unless you want there to be. Everything is going to exist on this panel on the right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is enter in the camera information so it can transform my footage into a Rec. 709 color space. So this footage I know was shot on a Sony FX3. So I'm gonna choose camera, Sony FX3, and it was shot in S-Log3 S-Cine Gamut. So once I've entered in that information correctly, I can then use the rest of this panel to change the exposure or temperature of my footage. Uh, I don't think this footage needs to be exposed differently, but if I did, I could just use these sliders here to simply change the temperature or tone of my image. I think that's looking pretty good. Once that's all done, I get out of the input here and I go over to the film. And now this is really where the magic happens for this plugin. This is where you get into what film the plugin will be emulating for you. So as you can see, when I drop down this menu, there are so many cool options. There's Fujifilm emulations, there's Ilford emulations, there's a whole butt ton of Kodak emulations, there's Lomochrome, there's Polaroid, there's Rolly. It's pretty quite amazing how many different film stocks you can mess with using this plugin. I personally am a huge fan of the Kodak Vision 3 series of film emulations. Uh, for instance, this Kodak Vision 3 250D has been used on pretty much every Christopher Nolan film in the past 15 years. We're talking Inception, Interstellar, Dunkirk, The Dark Knight. If it's good enough for Christopher Nolan, it's certainly good enough for me. So we're going to choose the Kodak Vision 3 250D emulation, which looks really, really cool. Once I've enabled that, you can see that the emulation has started to take effect over my footage as I toggle that off and on. So the next tab I'm going to look at is the film developer tab. And first thing I'm gonna do is enable it. And then I can start adjusting the contrast of my image if I'd like. As well as some other features here like gamma correction, color separation, and color boost is kind of like your vibrance to the image. So once I'm done with the Film Developer tab, I move to the Film Compression tab, 
and I'm gonna enable that. And what this does is kind of messes with the dynamic range of the footage. So how much range you have before something is over or underexposed. Um, that's a hallmark feature of film is it classically has different ranges and dynamic range compared to most digital cinema cameras like I shot this on. So if you want all of the range that you had on your digital camera that you shot on like I did, I can move the tonal range all the way to 100 and then also the impact slider all the way to the 100. And as you can see, it kind of moves everything to the middle on this histogram down here. If I start to dial that back, everything starts to get pushed to the edges as I'm losing dynamic range. But I'm gonna slide that to 100. And of course, like all these tabs, you gotta make sure they're enabled for them to kick in and start working. And what's really nice is editing in Dehancer is kind of like editing in Lightroom, whereas if you do something you don't like, you just click Edit Undo and you're back to square one. So I'm gonna close the Film Compression tab and the next thing I'm gonna move over to is the Print tab. Now, this is like choosing a film emulation. This is choosing the film in which your finished product would be printed on if this was a real film process. So I'm gonna choose the Kodak 2383 print film, and I'm gonna enable that. And as you can see, that gives that really cool filmic look that a lot of us are striving for. One of the other big hallmarks of what makes film film is grain. So I'm gonna head over to the film grain tab and I'm gonna enable that and you can see immediately it's added awesome filmic grain to my footage. Now, they give you all sorts of different types of grain to choose from, everything from eight millimeter to 65 millimeter. Now, typically with grain, the higher ISO film you choose, the more grain there will be. As you can see, I went to 16 millimeter, 500 ISO and there is a ton of grain. But if I like that grain pattern, but I wanna dial it back, I just go to the slider here and dial it back until I am happy with it. I think I'm gonna stick with the 35 millimeter ISO 50, and I'm gonna move it to around 20% there. And as I toggle this on and off, you can see the texture it's adding to this clip. Now I'm gonna move on to my favorite part of this plugin, and it's something that you're seeing a lot of online these days, halation. Now halation is hot spots of your image and the glow, orangey, warm glow that uh, film applies to those parts of your image. If I click this and enable halation right now, you can see it warms up some of these highlights in my image, like the top right here. I'll toggle that on and off so you can see. Now, if I amplify that to 100, you can see that it's warming up the image. Specifically, if you look here on uh, some of the hotter spots of the image, you can see here, that's halation. Now, just like grain, there are different types of halation you can add. There's Super 8, 16 millimeter, 65 millimeter, 35 millimeter, and I think I'm gonna stick with the 35 millimeter. And I'm gonna leave it at 70. I'm kind of liking the way that's looking. The next thing I'll move on to is Bloom. And like halation, it uh, affects primarily the uh, brighter tones in your image and kind of softens them. And I'm gonna, again, leave that at 35 millimeter and leave it at 50%. From there, there are a bunch more things you can do. You can add film damage to your image, add these little cracks and, and little specks all over your footage, just like if it was actual film. Uh, there's film breath, which again, a similar type of effect. It's going to uh, add the imperfect characteristics of a film moving through a camera. And that is also with the gate weave, and then there's things like overscan, which give you different overlays to throw over your footage. This is again, really popular on social media. One of the nice things too about this is once I've created a film look that I'm really happy with, uh, I can simply just click this note here and copy it. And once I move on to the next clip of my project, I can just paste it. And already I have the same film look that I had on my other clip. So if you want to have a very uniform project that looks identically the same, 
you just simply create an effect using Dehancer once and you copy and paste that everywhere you would like it. The last thing I want to show you guys is how I would uh, use Dehancer on a Rec. 709 clip. So this is a clip that isn't in a log color space. So for those of you, I imagine there are a lot of you out there not filming in flat log uh, footage. Uh, it's really, really easy. You can still use Dehancer. It still works just as great. Uh, this, this clip here was taken using a Canon Rebel T3i uh, and I'm gonna approach it the exact same way with one little difference at the start. I'm going to simply grab the film emulation, drop it onto my first node and I'm gonna go to the input and make sure that's set to Rec. 709. Once it's set to Rec. 709, I can go through Dehancer just like I would any of my other stuff and color away. It's really, really that easy. So there you have it. There's a pretty quick overview on all of the cool things you can do to your footage using Dehancer. If you're somebody that's coming from maybe the photo editing world, it's really quick to pick this up and start slapping it on your footage and giving that cool film look to your stuff, which is so popular these days. And it's popular for a reason. Film is something that we as humans perfected over the course of 100, 100 years, more than that, I don't know, a long, long time. So it's really cool to be able to add these things to our digital imaging. Uh, thanks to the folks at Dehancer for giving me the opportunity to check out this plugin. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys will check it out. If you do check it out and you do decide you wanna purchase it, if you use the promo code Radcliffe here on the screen, uh, you will get 10% off on that purchase. So if you're into it, definitely use that plugin, get yourself 10% off. All right, so there you have it. That's Dehancer for DaVinci Resolve. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys in the next one.